No matter how many tutorials you watch on interfaces, it just doesn't click. It's something I struggled a lot with and I found a way to tell it in a way that everybody can understand. This is the only video that you need to watch on interfaces and if it does indeed help you, please subscribe. Also remember that this won't be a coding tutorial so you don't have to write code after me. It's more of an explanation video where I will make you understand interfaces because the focus of my channel is to make you understand things so that you can code independently. I could just tell you they are a contract to a class, but if you are a beginner that doesn't say anything to you. It's a difficult concept because the only way to understand it is to face a problem that will force you to learn it. That is precisely how I learned the concept around them. So let me show you how you can do it too. Lately I've been playing the game Diablo 4 that has so many examples of how interfaces are implemented. The main game character can interact with many objects in the game. We can interact with blacksmiths, stashes, portals, doors, etc. But how does that work? How would you code it? To interact with each I had to press only one button. If you are new to game development, interaction system is probably one of the first things that you will must implement in your games. And of course, the best way to learn interfaces is by building an interaction system. I'm going to show you an example how to do it, but first I'm going to show you a bad example, something beginners would do, and then I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. And inside an update method is where we are calling an interaction method. Is interaction key pressed is a condition that checks if the interaction button is pressed while can interact checks if our player is within the proximity of an object we want to interact with. When both conditions are true we will proceed to the interact method. Interact is an empty method at the moment and here is where we will write code to interact with objects. As in Diablo example we will first write an interaction with the blacksmith. We want to replicate that same functionality and here's how we will do it. I will write a reference for our blacksmith class and set it to null. Then inside on trigger enter I will check if our player is inside proximity collider of the blacksmith object. So when we enter the blacksmith's proximity we will cache the blacksmith's reference. On trigger exit will clear the reference so that we can trigger interaction once we leave the blacksmith proximity. Inside interact I will write a null check for the blacksmith. If the condition is true then we will open the shop. That's all we had to do and now our player can open the shop. But now let's say we want to interact with more objects. Let's do the same for opening of the stash just like in Diablo. We will do the same thing we did for blacksmith. Do you see anything wrong here? If you don't then let's extend it even farther. Let's add interaction for the portal and door. Do you see how our code is growing now? Each time we want to add a new interaction we must extend this player class. And not just that but we are also repeating the same work. And that is something you never want to do. There is a programming principle that is called DRY which stands for don't repeat yourself. Whenever you are doing things repeatedly that means that you are doing something wrong and that should signal to you that you must do something different. Now I will add more interactions to make it even more apparent. Do you see how our player class has grown? This is a bad example that I wanted to show you and this is how most beginners would code it. They will create this sizable monolithic class that is impossible to maintain. This is why it's crucial to understand interfaces because they help us to decouple our class and reduce tight coupling. Now let's see how experienced developers would approach the same problem. Let's start with writing our first interface and name it iInteractable. Uppercase i stands for an interface and the reason why interfaces are written that way is that it's just a convention that makes it easier to recognize an interface when being referenced so it's not confused with a class. Then inside it I will write a method named interact. Now back to our player class we need to do some refactoring. Delete reference to all interactable objects and instead we will only reference our interactable interface. Since interface is null we need to cache it and clear it inside on trigger enter and on trigger exit just like we did before. We will remove the interact method completely and instead 
write interactable.interact. This is essentially the same as the interact method that we just deleted. Now this is all the code that we need to be able to interact and did you notice how shorter it is? We don't need to extend functionality manually by repeating ourselves anymore. But now every object that we can interact with has to implement an I interactable interface and handle its implementation. If you see this red here, it's because we didn't implement its members, which we will do now. So now each interactable object will handle its interaction logic inside the interact method. Let's do the same for all interactable objects. They all must implement an I interactable interface. What we wrote here would work the same as the code we wrote before. There wouldn't be any difference in the gameplay. But when we want to add more more interactable objects we can just implement an interface and its members and it's all done we won't ever have to touch our player class again okay now that we reduce complexity and improved code readability it still might be too confusing so i'm going to give you another example a visual example and i will draw exactly what the cpu is doing and it will make more sense Let's look at our door opening example in Diablo 4. I will try to draw exactly what is going on. I will show you a bad example first of what exactly is going under the hood. Our player will approach the door and here around these doors there is an invisible collider. So basically that is where our on trigger enter and on trigger exit occur. And here is the actual code when we enter the proximity collider. This is what your CPU is doing at this exact moment. It's running this block of code. Let's go line by line and explain everything. This boolean says, hey, we are inside the proximity and we can interact with this door. Since this is true, we can show this X button here to notify the player that he can press an interaction button. Then our CPU will proceed to the next step. It is going to check if this is a blacksmith object. Obviously, this is not a blacksmith. This is a door object. So the CPU is going to proceed to the next step. Is this a stash object? No, proceed. Is this a portal object? No, proceed. Is this a door object? Yes, it is. So the CPU will cache it into a variable so that we can reuse it within our class. Did you notice anything wrong here? Our CPU had to check for objects that were not even in player's proximity. It had to do all those extra steps to find the door object. In programming, you never want to do these unnecessary calls like we did here. Imagine if instead of these four objects we had a hundred interactable objects that would need to do a hundred unnecessary calls in a single frame. If we for some reason decide to delete blacksmith object our CPU would still check for it even though it's not in the game. Now let's try to open these doors and let's see what our CPU is doing. After we press interact button our CPU will run this block of code and it will start doing checks line by line. On the first line it will check if blacksmith is not null, which is false. If you remember we only cached the door object, so all these other objects are null. Now it proceeds to the stash, then to the portal, then to the door. Since our door is cached and not null, it will proceed to this method open door and call it. As you can see we had to do these extra calls once again unnecessarily. We had to run nine checks just to find our door object. When looking at these interactable objects, we shouldn't see them as classes like blacksmith, stash, portal or door, you should see them as interactables. So our player is interacting with interactables and not with individual classes. So if we remove any of them, the player does not care as he can't interact with something that doesn't exist. Let's try to visualize this other code example with interfaces and let's see what's going to happen. We will do the same thing like we did in the previous example. I will approach the door proximity collider and this code will get activated. Since we are inside the collider, on trigger enter will be called. On this line we will cache an empty interactable interface. And on this part here we will get a component from an object that has this I interactable interface. If you remember our door class has an I interactable interface and that is what we will get after get component is called. In the previous example we made four checks but in this example we are doing only one. Now let's proceed to open the door with the input. After the player has pressed an interaction button this code will be triggered and the door will open. The door opening logic will occur inside the door class itself but the player will only call the interact method 
derived from the I interactable interface. So in total, in this example, we had only three calls. And if we decide to add a hundred interactable objects, it's still going to be three calls only. Now, I hope that you see why experienced developers take advantage of interfaces. I personally didn't use interfaces for a very long time, it just didn't click for me. And whenever I watch tutorials on interfaces, all I learned is it's just a contract, which is not really helpful. Or in the tutorials, they just read these buzzwords of Wikipedia page that end up only confusing me. And in my tutorials, I try to explain things in a way that even a five-year-old can understand. If you are looking for a community where you can get the best Unity tips for free, I built a Discord community that you can join. It's still a new server that I'm looking to grow, but I'm always active there and I'm ready to answer your questions. Tell me down in the comments if this video was helpful. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe as my channel will share the best tips that everybody can understand. And see you in the next video.